pornography is, is something that is uh, is a plague. And by the way, don't think that uh, Muslims are not plagued with it. Uh, we are. We're human beings. And uh, the environment you're in, the company you keep, will also dictate that. If you build uh, a relationship upon falsehood and haram, it, it, exactly that's the foundation. is very shaky. That's wow. horrible. Is it okay to let go? If we don't get divorced, uh, I'm going to end up in jail and she's going to end up in morgue. I go, go ahead, divorce. So the stigma is cultural, not religious. Yeah, that sister is, is divorced, they put an X, it's the red flag. Bismillah, wa salatu salam ala rasulillah, Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa mawala. Allahum ishrah li sadri wa yasir li amri. Wahlu al-uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is an episode that I have been looking forward to. We have Sheikh Ala. Al Sayyid with us. How are you, Sheikh? Alhamdulillah, feeling much better already. How are you? Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Sheikh, we're a podcast that we don't mind tackling the difficult topics. And Alhamdulillah, we you know we got to know each other a little bit and I realized you are the perfect man to bring on for this episode. Um, speaking about marriage and all the hot topics regarding marriage, inshallah. So are you ready to tackle all the all the Let's hot subjects? Let's do this thing. Let's roll. Inshallah, inshallah. Allah <laughs> bismillah. We'll start, inshallah, with the start. The search. All right, we'll start where it all starts. So a lot of us are looking to get married, you know, but we don't know where to look, subhanAllah. We've got, you know, we've asked our audience for some questions. And just to summarize um, what a lot of them are asking, a lot of people are asking the same thing. Where do I find a wife with quote unquote traditional values in the West? I know it's a good question indeed, and it's a difficult one to answer because you don't really have halal bar somewhere in there. You go, hey, baby, what's your matter? <laughs> Uh, so uh, it's difficult, but it is what it is, alhamdulillah. And yeah. we're living in the uh, in the West. It's more difficult. It's challenging, and uh, we don't want to go, you know, sweep right, sweep left, and mm. move on. Uh, it's something that uh, I've been thinking about a lot, and I've implemented in different organizations. I started with. Uh, so one of the solutions, I said, we have like a family potluck dinner, where the family comes together. Uh, the families get to know each other. At least fathers and fathers, mothers and mothers, they, they will know that they have a, I have a son uh, that's ready to get married. I have a daughter that gets ready to get married. That will be one way to do it. So I suggest for all the centers to have something like a family public dinner where families get to know one another. So that's mm -hmm. one way to do it. Okay. The second is to have like a, a married service uh, for something that would be uh, done in a halal way. Uh, the third would be a, a website. We started a website uh, for Isna Canada, where I uh, used to be the imam for 15 years. Mm. Uh, we had also a, a, a got a bit too big because I couldn't keep up uh, all the requests. Mm. You know, doing manually, then I had a file on the computer, and then it was too much. A spreadsheet. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> so uh, some of the brothers, alhamdulillah, came through. Uh, three brothers started a website. Mm. And that website is uh, Mum, a Muslim match up Muslims. Okay. So alhamdulillah, there's no shopping. You know, you don't go in and, you know, look for anything else. It's only one admin that has it and the computer uh, basically spits out 10 uh, compatible uh, searches for you and the admin looks for the most uh, relevant one and they contact uh, one like at a time for the email and if they like what they see, if, uh, what they hear, they connect each other. Okay. So if one presses green, one presses red, they don't connect. If they both they like uh, what they see and what they hear, they will connect. They will not be able to see each other unless they both collect green. And it's with the knowledge of their wali, their guardian. Then we're out. And of yeah. course, we make sure that there's a, a video up front explaining the process, what to look for, you know, what to do istikhara, istara. We don't put a disclaimer because obviously we don't want anybody to say, you know, we didn't suggest that, no, we're just helping you facilitate. Mm. So that was uh, the third uh, thing that I would do. And uh, believe it or not, uh, number one on the list is actually arranged marriage. But before you shoot, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> it's not what you think. It's not the one that you know what uh, you know. You're gonna marry your cousin Vinny, and uh, they're gonna ship you the thing by uh, you know uh, pure later and go to the you know airport pick up your wife that you've never seen. And it's not, that's not what I mean. But what I mean is actually the highest rate of success, believe it or not, is arranged marriages. Wow. And uh, yeah, I know it's a surprise to a lot of people. Uh, but arranged marriages, like, you know, the family know each other, the mom knows exactly what to look for, and they see, uh, the, you know, the women and their daughters, and they, they know what, you know, what, what you like, what you don't like. 
So once they do that, they arrange for some kind of a get together without maybe the both of them know, and for the, the cross their path somehow. And if they're uh, interested initially, then they arrange for them to sit down with the mahram and everything is in halal way. So these are the things that I definitely would uh, do. The fifth uh, on my list is to go to the imam of the masjid. Mm. Because the imam, whether you like it or not, most people go to them, they trust him. They're respected uh, people, they're, uh, they're, they're trusted they're, and so on. So usually the parents go and uh, tell him, you know, I have a son, I have a daughter, and he keeps track. Uh, especially, you know, what I, what I look for is compatibility and so on. So these are five ways uh, you can hopefully uh, do in the halal means. And of course, uh, the father's responsibility to look for a good suitor, like Umar Khattab. So I also encourage fathers to look for a good suitor for their daughter more than they look for a daughter for their son. Mm. So uh, like a daughter-in-law. So this is something that I would, you know, take to heart. Uh, and these are hopefully six things that you can do and uh, will help you in the future. Allah alam. I noticed you didn't mention looking for your wife on Instagram. <laughs> yeah, maybe uh, maybe in the 20 years or something. I don't know that would be a thing, but at this point, uh, I don't think so. so uh, <laughs> Instagram wife, but uh, because of the high expectations and yeah, you know, yeah, the yeah. Bollywood thing. Of course, and, I'm uh, joking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I know, of course. Yeah, yeah subhanAllah. No, but <clears throat> that is actually something that a lot of viewers would be, would be asking. Like, if I was to find a sister on Instagram, how would I go about it? Yani, khalas, like, like you've seen someone and you've, you know, you've had your first look, you know, and then you decide, okay, this is the sister, khalas, you meet all my criteria. What do I do? You know, what, what would be, say you do start in that way, which is not ideal, what would be the best, you know, the best next step to take after that? Yeah, if, you know, reality check, things mm. happen whether we like it or not. Social yeah. media is a powerful tool and it's the language of the youth nowadays. So mm. uh, whether we like it or not, it exists and it will. Uh, for as long as I know, and Allahu Alam, of course. So if you see something that you like, um, obviously, you know, you will cater to your needs and you will also look for uh, your market. So if you like certain things, and uh, obviously that's what you're looking for, you know, pay the price, whether it's good or bad or ugly. Uh, but I don't recommend for you to get in touch with the sister, nor do the sisters get in touch with the brothers. So yes. I always say, you know what, a brother knows a sister, uh, like a family, you know, a family member of that, either their mom or their sister or someone mm -hmm. that will get in touch with the sister. But I do not recommend for the brother to get in touch with the sister directly, nor the sister get in touch with the brother directly. And if the sister likes something, then she can talk to her brother, talk to her father, talk to anybody, a male member of the family, then we'll get in touch with the brother. And that would be the best way. Mm -hmm. So there are obviously safety nets and procedures that we, and a process that we recommend for the couple to get to know each other in a halal way, and also uh, steps like as, as, a, as a contingency plan, what to do before you say, I do. Yeah, sah, sah. No, I think oh, that, yeah. that pretty much covers that because, subhanAllah, a lot of people, they think that they're going to get uh, the traditional values by not taking, the, not taking the traditional means, you know, and going through Western measures such as, you know, meeting, you know, where are you going to meet her? You're going to go to the library, you're going to go to university, or, you know, you're going to meet her in that kind of way. So it's good to outline, you know, one, one, one through six, you know, six ways that you can actually go and, and meet someone online, inshallah. Um, um, okay, so you've met someone, you're in the talking stages. What's, what are some of the, the red flags? You know, some, uh, let, let's go four must-haves and four can't-haves. Right. So I usually recommend uh, for anyone that wants to get married to go to the ABCs. So the A list is I cannot live without. This mm -hmm. is something I sh this this brother or this sister must have. Mm -hmm. My future spouse must have this list. So it's the A list. The B list is I can't live with. It's impossible for me to live with a person that has these criteria. Mm -hmm. You cannot kid yourself or fool yourself or lie, lie about it. The C list is the one that I usually recommend is negotiable. It's not do or die. It's not gonna. It's not a deal breaker or anything like that. So once you get to the ABCs, you're good. The second, what I recommend is um, what Dr. Habib's theory, Habibullah, uh, he says that we're made of three categories: a child, adult, a parent. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you, this is basically what this is going to words because this is how you raise a red flag and what you're looking for. But let me explain what the categories are and how it works and what could benefit. Without you knowing this, it may not benefit you. So the child uh, gets uh, basically a pleasure by receiving. Mm -hmm. uh, an adult uh, reciprocates, gets pleasure by receiving and also giving. 
A parent gets pleasure by giving, not receiving. So for example, when you talk to someone, uh, if you're, as long as you're talking about them, they're very interested. As long as you're talking about yourself, they'll be bored to do, <laughs> I gotta go. Or they turn the conversation back to themselves. Uh, or they, they ask them a simple question. You know, what kind of food you like? You know, I like seafood. And I do, I'm just saying. I also like biryani, which is I'm brown from the inside. Like, you know, I'm just saying, if you want to bring it, bring it. I'm just hungry right now. <laughs> so if, if you ask them what kind of food you like, they will, you know, they will say, I like seafood, and they won't bother asking you back. Uh, then the, uh, the adult, however, reciprocates. What kind of food you like? I like seafood. What about you? So you, these are the things, the flags that you can tell. The, the, the parent would actually say, what kind of food do you like? So it's not important what I like. It's what's important is what you like. Yeah. That's a parent. This theory will only work if you know who you are. So if you're in a category that you are a child, you know, the, the whole world revolves around you, me, 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 myself and I, you know, the narcissistic type of thing, and you have to be honest with yourself. Mm. If you're a child, the best combination is a child parent because they love receiving things and they love giving things. Majority of people actually in the middle, which is the adult, they both reciprocate. So if you know yourself what, uh, who you are, you look accordingly. So flags are child-child, the worst combination ever. Because mm. <laughs> what about me? What about me? What about my emotions? What about my feelings? What about mine, 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 mine? It's not going to work. You're mm. putting out fights for the rest of your life. Mm. So these are flags. So if you look into and be honest with you of the ABCs, uh, and you'll find out that the, the brother exactly is stingy, right? Uh, you know, that, that's a flag. You know, brothers, you know, he takes you out for, for dinner with a mahram, of course. You pay your thing and he pays his own. That's not a good sign. <laughs> he doesn't come out with a flower. He doesn't come out with a chocolate. He doesn't come up with any gifts whatsoever. Mm. That's a cheap brother with all due respect to homies. I got you back, but I'm just saying. Okay, so now you understand these are the flags. A sister, for example, gets, uh, you know, mad, mad real quick. A brother said, I, you know, I'm an alpha. She's an alpha. That's not going to work. You know what I mean? Uh, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a fiery guy myself, so I need a calm person. So these are the things you look for. If you know the list, mm. uh, you know, uh, this is something that is extremely important. So a trend is what I look for, not a spike. Everybody has off days. Mm. So when you speak in, you know what, uh, and you see a trend that this person, uh, you know, uh, not uh, exactly what you're looking for, and it's trending. Like, you know, it, yeah, every time I see something that's not uh, good, as opposed to if, uh, it's a spike, like once in a while, something happened, which is normal, we're human beings. Mm. So I'm not worried about spikes, I'm worried about, about uh, trends. This is something that's consistent, now you need to make a decision. I also need to know, do I see myself living with this person? Do I see myself growing old with this person? Do I see myself sitting on a, a swing watching the sunset after 50 years from now? Not saying anything but feeling I'm still happy because I'm sitting next to this person that sat next to me the first day. So these are a lot of things that you, you look for. But uh, again, the flags, uh, of course, as we talk about, there are steps and hopefully we can discuss it. What to do before you say I do, it's extremely important. That's your contentions plan and that's your safety net, inshallah. Yeah, so no, we'll definitely get into that, inshallah. Um, what practical steps we need to do to take care of ourselves before we're ready to take care of someone else. Uh, but with, uh, you know, red flags and, and issues that come up pre-marriage, how important is it for someone not to fall in love before they kind of go through that process of not vetting, so to speak, but, you know, trying to determine compatibility? Because a lot of a lot of the times, like I heard a story of a brother who uh, he saw a photo of a sister. It was actually sent to him. And every time he would wait for her to reply, he would go and look at the photo. And by, <coughs> excuse me. Yeah. And, and by the third hour, uh, he was in love with the sister. <laughs> and... After that, any red flags, he was waving them through his green. You know what I mean? So how, how important is it uh, to yeah. stop yourself as yeah. much as you can? You know, to A couple of things. Uh, first, let's correct the terminology here. It's impossible for a brother to fall in love with a sister. Of course, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah course. so this is like lust, yes, whims and desires, mm -hmm. attractions, physical attractions. Mm -hmm. These are infatuations. It's not love because love comes after marriage. Mm -hmm. You've been through the thick and thin and all of that stuff because God Almighty does. He says, He didn't say mm -hmm. Mahabba is love. Mawadda is the depth and the, and the origin of love. And it's like, there's much more to it than that. Uh, so if a brother says, I looked at her face, you know, uh, I see her face in a cereal bowl, Sheikh. I can't concentrate, man. <laughs> you know, my heart is aching. My knees are shaking. It's true. I am faking. She doesn't eat bacon. You know, all that stuff. 
You know, it's not working like that, dude. It doesn't come. And plus, the picture doesn't tell you the truth because I know. You know, the Photoshop thingy where they, uh, you know, when you meet a sister, she looks like, wow. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, when after you get married, you see the false eyelashes, false lenses, false teeth, false hair, false everything, man. <laughs> it's not the girl that I married, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, the, the, the fair and lovely and all the things that uh, that happens. So, uh, you know, I'd say be careful. Of course, don't go on, the, on the, in a picture because the pictures can be touched up, the Photoshops and all of these things, that, all the lenses that happens nowadays. So obviously in person is the, is the first one. So you start, the brother is so emotional, obviously, that type of brother. And he would look at the picture and he would already build dreams. You know, oh, this is the girl of my dream. You know, I found love. I'm already having children, uh, a, a goldfish, a cat. If you want to go with Imam Malik, you go with a dog, but don't, don't do it, just accept your <laughs> All of that stuff. So these are the things that I don't recommend. Don't fall in love with the picture, you know, uh, because it's just superficial. Uh, and obviously, just to make sure that they understand it doesn't happen that way. It's not a Bollywood movie. It's not what you think. It's a lot more than that. You're not picking a picture. You're picking a partner, picking a mother for your children, a father for your children, and, and, and the one that will put your hand in his or hers and also go to agenda together. That's okay. We have, uh, this is Australia, by the way. We have all these. Uh, we've had a guest things. cockroach yeah. coming. That's nice. Yeah. Masha, welcome aboard. <laughs> yeah, welcome to Australia. Uh, halas, no problem. Even the, even the cockroach wants the marriage advice. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. <laughs> I don't speak cockroachian, but uh, I'll do my best. Uh, no problem, inshallah. Okay, khair, inshallah. So, subhanAllah. Um, going on to the marriage meeting itself, what are some questions uh, that a brother and a sister uh, should and can ask each other? Um, and also, just just on a side side topic um, regarding, I know you mentioned the fake eyelashes and everything like that. We know the rulings on on makeup and and everything in Islam. However, how important is it to avoid disappointment and heartbreak for both the brother and the sister that they both go in just natural? That's my advice. I was actually hooking people up recently, mm. so just be yourself, man. Yeah. Don't pretend because these are short legs; they won't go far. Just be you yourself. This is who I am. If you follow me within the vision that I have, welcome aboard. If not, then it's a pleasure meeting you. Move on, move on. Best of lives. And wait till somebody that actually fits in, that you have to have like a best friend that's a lover. That's what I usually recommend. Mm. And that's, uh, you know, uh, actually what I call my wife, my my halal girlfriend. (laughs) And I actually emphasize that fact because the first thing, you know, halal, my relationship has to be halal. So I, I live by halal and haram. So if you start meeting uh, sisters behind their father's back and all of that stuff, so guess what? This guy should, uh, you know, discard because he's not amin according to Quran. Qawiyy al amin, right? Strong and trustworthy. And obviously, you know, in, in the sunnah, you know, uh, what we said, it is basically uh, uh, religious background, you know, dinu wa khuluqa, like religiosity and the khila, the character and the matters and the conduct that they have. And the character. So if these things are not there already, that's a red flag. So the, be careful, sisters. I don't want you to be coming as not sitting and you know, you know, the guy comes in and throw the things and you know, Rapunzel, throw down your hair, <laughs> go through the door, dude. So these are the things that uh, you can certainly um, you know watch out for. And, and when you meet, you meet in the halal means with the mahram, inshallah. Uh, picture would not help you. Uh, in person, definitely does. And talk, talk to each other. You know what? Talk about short-term plan, long-term plan. Tell me who you truly are. What do your friends say about you, right? Uh, and you can talk about things. There are so many questions you can talk about. You know, describe yourself to me, mm-hmm. right? Uh, like this, they will. This is the internal. Like it's, it's just a psychological output mm-hmm. from internal. They will, will, they will emphasize the, the fact. For example, what's your favorite color and why, right? What's your favorite animal and why? You know, you know how would you, how do you feel around water? How do you feel about the four walls? All well, these are psychological things. It is input. Mm. So basically, what color do you like? It's not important the color. What's important is why. Mm. Uh, you know, the, the color is how, how basically the the, the uh, how people perceive you. Mm. The animal is what you perceive yourself. You see the characteristics of that. So you'll get to know about something about themselves without actually uh, you having to dig. But just simple questions like that. And remember, the ABC list would help you a lot. Uh, you know, even the Shuraih al Qadi, you know, uh, his wife says, Ala Rislik, give me, a, give me a chance. The day of the marriage says, I don't know you, don't know me. Tell me what you like, I will do. And tell me what you don't like, I will not do. Mm-hmm. These are the things, you know what I mean? So then we discuss it. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, you know, the, the flags that, you know, you can't keep a conversation going. I understand that people will get nervous. I get it. 
uh, you know, first and, you know, you break the ice. And I tell the brothers more than the sisters, you're, you demand, you demand, you, you demand. So you got to keep the conversation, understanding, be, be cool, you know, uh, break the ice with a little bit of uh, joke is like salt a little bit here and there. So don't go there and make an interview. Where were you on the night of, uh, <laughs> what, it's not It's not what you think. So it's obviously make it a conversational piece. Yeah. It's not just questions and answers. Mm-hmm. It's not an interview type of thing. So obviously what you're looking for is, uh, is the conversation fluent? Are you struggling to keep the conversation going? Do you have something in common? Uh, do you actually enjoy talking to the person? Oh my God, dude, <laughs> let's, I, I have to go comb my rabbit's hair, I, something. So these are the things that you should uh, you should be looking for, inshallah. Mm. What about if you've again found yourself in a you know an undesirable situation, uh, and you're not worrying about a marriage meeting because you've had many meetings, and you've unfortunately entered a haram relationship, and we hear it so often. Um, you're from Canada, you know you must hear it just as often as we do. We want to make this relationship halal. That phrase. How do we? How do people? What should people do? And if they do want to marry this person, how do they go about it? Okay, so if uh, if you build uh, a relationship upon falsehood and haram, it, exactly that's the foundation is very shaky. That's wow. horrible. Wow. I know a sister that actually divorced her husband because she remembered what he used to do with her before marriage and she lost respect for him after. Wow. Uh, so if you start your relationship halal to please Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will bless this marriage. But if you start in haram means Allah will not bless this marriage. And I've seen enough uh, pregnant sisters in my office uh, with a parent that actually is her father, his mother is munaqqaba and the brother is with a beard. And the, and the brother himself has a beard and the sister is from hajjaba. So you know what? Shaitan has his tricks and they're not going to take you there to commit zina, commit adultery one step. No, no. Uh, look at this. A smile. Uh, send the sit next talk to her. Uh, send an email. Take a phone and uh, you know give her da'wah. All of that stuff that I that I hear about. That's one step. Khutuwat shaitan. Allah talks about steps of shaitan. Uh, so this is something that uh, I'm adamant about. To make sure that you're uh, you start halal means. Otherwise, you will pay the price in this life and hereafter. Uh, now, it, worst thing, the scenario, things happen. Some of the scholars says they come and ask you, pretend that you heard nothing because if she's pregnant, whatever it is, the ruling is very difficult. And some of the scholars say, you know what, they will take it, do the right thing, marry the girl. That's the lesser of the evils. But my recommendation, you know what, be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa jalla fi Allah because taqwa is a key and taqwa is only known when you're all alone. Uh, so if you, whatever you do will be done unto you. So if you're doing that to somebody's daughter, somebody will do that with your daughter. Somebody will do that to your wife. Somebody will do that to your sister. Somebody will do that to whatever. Mm-hmm. So if you cannot, if you don't want anybody to do that to your daughter or your sister or your wife, don't do it to anybody else's sister or daughter or wife. Mm-hmm. And that's my recommendation, Sheikh. So even if you make a mistake, repent to Allah. We're not going to close the, 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 the gates of mercy of Allah. Mm-hmm. But you know what? Stop uh, doing what it is and repent. Come back to Allah and do the right thing. But obviously... You don't have to do this if you start things right and to please Allah first and foremost. You can just imagine if Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was coming down to see this relationship or to know to do it. Will he be embarrassed or not? You remember I always talk about the GoPro on the forehead and you know your eyes are camera lenses, your your ears and your mouth is your hard drive and you're, 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 you're downloading everything. Your mind is your modem, this is a hard drive and your MP3 is actually downloading everything that you will be seen. So even if you hide it because somebody else, you know, Allah knows the angels written down, it will be seen, shown on, on Judgment Day. Mm-hmm. So indeed, make sure you do the right thing. Yes. And there are there's difference between doing the right thing and doing things right. So do the right thing, inshallah. That's, that's nice. <laughs> the difference between doing the right yeah. thing and doing things right, yes. subhanAllah. Khalas khair, inshallah. Um, we'll leave uh, the search there for now. And we'll talk about what you do when you're in the marriage and problems arise. We were speaking on the car ride here and you were telling me that the leading problem of marriages breaking down is a lack of closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, and this is of course in, in the Muslim community. Um, and in the wider community as well, we have um, financial sah, that, that, that is a leading issue as well. Mm-hmm. So as, a, as someone that's been a counsellor for over 30 years, um, and you've obviously counseled a lot of couples, you know, uh, through the generations, maybe even counseled their children, you know, not to make you feel old, Sheikh. <laughs> I am old. <laughs> <laughs> but my point is that you have, you've seen it all, essentially. Uh, so what are some, some issues that you've seen uh, that 
as an ummah and as as people going into marriages we should be aware of so let me give you what dr umar abdul kafi Allah talks about the triangle so he says the marriage is like a triangle allah is above all of course uh, the husband is on this side the wife is on this side the closer you are to allah the closer you are to each other the further away from allah the further away from each other so the thing is, that's what uh, the word taqwa is repeated over 200 times in the Quran. It's all about the beginning of life, end of life, family life. All of these things is revolving. Even when you when you hear the khatib is given the khutbah al-haja, the three ayat that he always starts the khutbah with, you know, taqwa, taqwa, taqwa. It's all about family here after life. It's all of that stuff. So if we don't have that taqwa, sheikh, between us, uh, it's going to be very difficult. So I tell the, 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 the couple to raise a banner. Mm-hmm. You know, the banner is, you know, um, in abaytum illa an da'su allaha feena, nahnu laba illa amutihu allaha feekum. Which means if you insist but to disobey Allah in treating me, I insist but to obey Allah in treating you. So because you will not be held accountable how the other person is treating you, but you will be held accountable how you treat others. So that's one. Uh, the second is obviously uh, financial. So number one on the list uh, for divorce globally is financial. So that's why Prophet Muhammad sallallahu says, Ya ma'ashar al-shaba, man istata'a binkum al-ba'a fal yatazawaj. So uh, when Prophet Sallallahu said, oh, young people, he didn't say shab, <laughs> he says shabab. Mm. <laughs> so young people, so don't wait till you get the double PhD and you become a CEO and, and all of that. So don't make it difficult, make halal difficult, haram becomes easy. And that's why I want to talk to the, you know, the parents a little bit later, inshallah. Mm. But for now, please also understand that if you have the ability to get married, go ahead. So uh, financial uh, is number one reason for divorce. So I personally sponsored my children, even though I push for early marriage. My daughters got married at 18, my son 22. He gave me a little bit of my time. He was a little bit picky, so I'm going to smack him upside down. And see him. <laughs> but alhamdulillah, they're all married. Alhamdulillah, I mean, uh, now I'm getting a second honeymoon, so it's, I'm free, free at last. Yeah. So I kind of paid my dues, now we cruise. And so this is something that I, I tell the, the, the parents, look, sponsor your children. Mm-hmm. The, the first one, everybody stayed with me for the first two years. They got firm, they got strong, they had a little bit of some money saved. They can go up now, either put a down payment on a house, start a business, do something by far. This is what I, what I usually recommend. So parenting is extremely important also to be able to uh, help the children keep in the, the, the tie and the bond strong. So number two, believe it or not, is uh, intimate relations. So we're talking, the, the prevention, uh, number one is, is uh, financial, number two is intimate relations. Number three is, because it's extremely important, because you're the only halal source for <laughs> each other. And if you don't have that, well, well what's going to happen? And we talk about issues that comes from the intimate relations of mm-hmm. a fallout. Number three is actually communication. Mm-hmm. There is a lack of communication and there is a lack of, they don't understand each other's secrets, they don't understand their lingo. They don't know about the computer theory. They don't know about all these things. There's over 20 secrets that you must know. And that's why I recommend highly to take a course about marriage before you get married. Mm-hmm. You know, when we buy phones and all of the stuff, we do our homework. We do our research. You know, is it uh, Android, you know, Samsung or iPhone or what do you want to do? The specs and you make a poll. You go to your, your social media. Which one, guys? And you tell you, you do your, all your homework. But for marriage, Allahu Akbar. So these are the things, you know, when you get the rukhsa, you get the, the marriage license. Very difficult, by the way, to, to get a driver license. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, in the West. But to get a marriage license is very easy. You just pay X amount of money to a piece of idea. We are good. Mm-hmm. But, to, but to, this is what I tell us. Please take the rukhsa, get your course before you take the, the family. So these are the things that uh, usually uh, will help a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, so to prevent, have a, like a financial counselor, have a budget, talk about the issues. Make sure you don't uh, have a, you know, the, uh, you know very uh, extravagant uh, wedding because this is what I usually get. There's first, uh, you know, um, uh, Mahindi, yeah, yeah. and then there's the uh, Nikah Na'mati, then there's the Rukhsati, then there's the Bankruptcy. <laughs> That's what happens. The people, the couple has spent so much money just to be alone together, Sheikh. Yeah. So you want to please people, you know, and then you have a shaky foundation. And wallahi, I don't recommend it. So these are the things that I, uh, I warn people from. So stay away from that. Have a of managers. Make sure that you, you do your homework. Uh, you know, pick right, you know, it's uh, human resources. You know, the hiring process will alleviate the firing process. Don't live the whole rest of your life putting out fires. Mm. Choose right. SubhanAllah. Yeah. yeah, SubhanAllah. I heard a story about a brother who was, who was married and divorced, and then he was still paying off the wedding a year after the divorce. SubhanAllah. <laughs> so, <laughs> Speaking of that, yeah. it's a joke, all right? It's a joke. So chill, relax, sit down if you're standing. Uh, one son asking his father, 
Hey, Dad, how much does marriage cost? He says, I don't know, son. I'm still paying. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> subhanallah, subhanallah. I speak freely. My wife is not here, but yeah, yeah, please. Khair, inshallah. Don't if she doesn't watch this, yeah. inshallah. inshallah. Um, khair, inshallah. Look, we'll, we do need to take a bit of a dark turn. You spoke about intimate relations uh, in a marriage. And this is a disclaimer. If you are under the age of 18, I can, this is a good time to tune out, inshallah. Um, I'm not sure why you're watching this in the first place, but just mm. tune out, inshallah. Um, so I've got a couple of stories here. Um, we'll go through one of them. Uh, and I, I kind of collated these stories just so we can speak about these issues in a real sense. Um, and one of our questions from, from one of our viewers was about a husband that is intimately unavailable and what to do about that situation. Um, so I'm going to go through this story, inshallah. Um, and this is titled, My Husband Admitted He Was and Is a Porn Addict. So it says, We have been married for three years, and overall we have been so happy. My husband is truly so kind and thoughtful, and we get along so well. Before we got married, I brought up porn, and I told him it was a deal breaker for me. A few times throughout our marriage, it came up, and I asked him if he has used porn since we've been married. He always said no. Last week, he admitted that he has been using porn occasionally since we got married. And he's also revealed that he was not a virgin when we got married. I feel manipulated, sad, angry, and so lost. I uprooted my whole life for this man, and I gave my whole self to him, and have always been honest, vulnerable, and loyal. I feel like the man I thought he was and the man he is are two different people. I don't even look at him the same anymore. Of course, I still love him, but I can't comprehend how, one, he could lie to me over and over again, and two, that he could look at something so disgusting and degrading and not consider how I would feel or the effect it would have on our marriage. And she goes on to speak about, you know, how it's affected their intimate <clears throat> life. And we won't go into too much detail. Yeah, yeah first, uh, I'm sorry the sister's going through this. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us and guide him and guide us all. Uh, pornography is, is uh, you know, pornography is, is something that is, uh, is a plague. And by the way, don't think that uh, Muslims are not plagued with it. Uh, we are. We're human beings. And uh, the environment you're in, the company you keep will also dictate that. Uh, however, having, uh, having said that, uh, I've dealt with these issues quite a few times. Uh, one of my good friends, the Sheikh Wa'il Ibrahim, is actually here in Aziland. He's, he's the expert in the field, so I highly recommend to, to use him as resources. In the meanwhile, uh, I had a thing with him discussing these, uh, these issues uh, before. And one of the things that I actually um, uh, recommend for the brothers is don't start because if, if you do, you're going to get addicted. And it is an addiction. Uh, so I, I tell them the, 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 the example is I want you to imagine that you're playing on your PS5, right? And you're, you're good at basketball. And, uh, you know, you're really good in, uh, behind the screen and privately. And you're such a level, you know, that is so high. You're competing now internationally and all of that stuff. Then you get your wish. You pulled up for the big leagues. You know what? Come on, play for the big leagues. And all of a sudden... In, in, in the NBA. Yeah, in, in the NBA. Now you're on court. You know, you're so good behind screens. Nobody sees you and you're just between you and whatever it is. And all of a sudden, you're actually in the court live and a lot of people are watching you and you have to perform. You buckle because you're not used to this. That's one of the things about the addictions of pornography because you're simply used to certain things. You're not able to perform otherwise. Uh, second is you're, you're looking at something that is Photoshop. Not, these are not real. These are not the, the real thing that you're going to get. Uh, third, uh, they've been taking certain things or cut and paste or uh, continue with this. So they go for such a long time so you'll feel inferior. Third, uh, fourth is uh, your wife hasn't been with anybody before. Now you're going to compare what you've been watching, what you're looking for, and what this girl does to this man. You know, uh, obviously, uh, uh, out, of, out of wedlock or a uh, lawful relations, you're expecting your wife to perform the same thing, and it's not fair. Mm -hmm. And you're expecting also for this girl to look like this girl, that you are, you are now feeling, I cannot do the same thing as this guy, and, and, and. so it, it hurts. It's a lose-lose, a, it's a, it's a not a win-win. Mm -hmm. Plus, you're, you're, you're used to certain uh, uh, speed, certain uh, tightness, certain grip, certain things, uh, certain things to see, things, things that will, uh, will, uh, will make you uh, feel moved or emotions or reach some promised land. And that's going to be very difficult indeed. So it's going to be frustrating for you and her. Mm. So uh, highly recommend, highly recommend. Don't start. And if you have, seek therapy to get out of it. But I'm going to tell the sister, if you love this man, Ukhti, uh, hang in there. 
So have patience, uh, make lots of dua, be a part of the solution, not the problem. Uh, you know, be there for him if you really think that he's a good man, as I heard. It's an illness and, and a disease. So cure the ill, nas, but don't kill the ill. Mm. SubhanAllah. And there are other posts, we won't go into the, the text and the detail, but, you know, sisters urging brothers, please cure your addiction before you get married. Don't bring it into the marriage. You're going to break your wife's heart. You're going to ruin things. You're going to ruin her. You know, you're going to you're gonna be impotent. You're not going to be able to, like you said, you're not going to be able to perform. You know, she's going to be constantly comparing herself. And subhanAllah, like it, it's, it's, a, it's a huge problem. So the message is clear to, to brothers, Yani, before you get married, solve the problem, sir. Absolutely. Now, worst case scenario, uh, I don't recommend for you to divulge your secrets, like uh, according to Al-Hakam Al-Mustadrak, in Sahih Al-Ghayri, he ala shart al-Bukhari wa Muslim. Mm. Uh, you know, God Almighty will not hold you accountable for that. Uh, you don't talk about or do something about. Mm. So I would usually uh, don't recommend for a couple to go back in the past and dig because that's what istikhara is for. Mm. So don't embarrass anybody and do anything else. And do, you can say, Allah al-Afu al-Afiyya, alhamdulillah li afana. Alhamdulillah, Allah pardon us. Mm. Because right now, this could be a good person that is ta'ib, a good, a good sister that is yeah, ta'ib. So you don't poke and you don't dig. You're not asked to do this. Sah. You understand? Mm. So these are the things that I, uh, because I heard in the beginning of the question that I, um, I actually neglected to address, but hopefully mm. these are the things that you don't have to dig so deep. Mm. We, we take what's apparent. Mm. Yeah, and these are the things that obviously if you come to, uh, you know, ask for somebody's reputable and asking for, mm. what's, what about your past? I'm going to shoot you. <laughs> because yeah, yeah. You, daughter, you understand? These are mm. things that you're out of etiquette and matters. And I'm asking, says that don't dig so much. Don't, brother, don't dig so much. Mm. You know, actually, you go to a family that is known to be respectable, known to be righteous, known to be practicing, and so on. That's your target audience. Mm. You're not going to insult them by doing these things. No, no, the brother. If the brother doesn't have what it takes, why should he come to the house anyway to start? Mm. Made it very clear. If you don't have one, two, three, four, don't knock on the door. Mm. And same thing with you're going to ask for the sisters and the marriage. You, are you you're already doubting and you're going back on a negative? So this thing that you know, added etiquette and matters. We should not be digging so deep and accusing anyone of anything and making sure that, you know what, I went to a good family, I expect it, but your istikhara will, uh, will reveal that for you because mm. we don't know what's hidden, we don't know what's in the future. Allah does subhanahu wa ta'ala, and your istikhara, so I say istikhara, istikhara, azman tawakkul. Consult before you do your home, before you ask. You ask the people that, that they love you, do good things for you, and they trust you, and, they, and you trust them. You know, ask about, you know, where they went to school, where did they work, uh, how were they at, uh, the, what about the masjid, ask the imam of the masjid, did they travel with somebody, did they deal in financial with somebody? If somebody gives you a thumbs up, move on. If they, everybody gives you a thumbs down, you know, run, run, force, yeah, run, jump shit, man. Of course. And so on. Yeah, khair, inshallah. Um, final question, inshallah, before we go to the viewers' questions. Um, if you end up in a situation where you find yourself married to someone and they start abusing drugs or alcohol, um, or you find that they've stopped praying, what do you do in this situation? I first, actually, when I talked, the couple says you didn't do your homework. Mm. Uh, based on what you said yesterday, this uh, guy, Ukhti. You know, you usually say, oh, Sheikh, have you seen this? <laughs> it's, a, mm. it's a big rock. Yeah. Uh, or he came in with a Mercedes Benz or his hair. He's wearing like Jenny Versace, Giorgio Armani. Mm. I used to have hair. Come on. I'm just saying. <laughs> so these are the things that, you know, you picked on the wrong criteria. Mm. And why did you say this to this girl? Well, 36, 24, 36, Sheikh, where do I sign? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They got, uh, they got all the wrong criteria. They don't have, they don't do the homework. You know, the four things, four things, as I said, two things in the Quran, two things in Sunnah. Strong and trustworthy. They're together because if he's strong, but not trustworthy, he will misuse and abuse his power over you. Mm -hmm. And if Khuluq and Deen, you know, they, they rhyme. So all you have to remember is Qawi, Amin, Khuluq and Deen. You know, if, if the brother doesn't have the character, it is a reflection of his religiosity. So if he doesn't have the akhlaq, that, that the, it means it's not, I don't care how long the beard is, I don't mm. care how short the thobe is, mm. he doesn't have it. And the brothers obviously look for the four things. And remember the, you know, her beauty, lineage, and wealth, and the deen, it's a for that deen, like hold on, it comes from Dufur. Just grab this girl, snatch it, don't let go. And I, as I've, I've given that example, so hopefully we will uh, we will address this now, inshallah. Mm. If Prophet said number one is deen, brothers, here you go. So you put number one up. If she's rich, if she's beautiful, let's say she puts up, she's a 10, alhamdulillah. She's rich, another zero, 100%. Comes with good lineage, another zero, batting a thousand. Take away the deen, what do you got? Zero, yeah. Enjoy. SubhanAllah, SubhanAllah.
It's the best way to put it. Yeah. Um, we'll go to the viewer questions, inshallah. Sure. I'm sure they've been waiting a long time. Um, so one is asking, I will wear niqab and become a homemaker after marriage, but I can't do it now due to circumstances, workplace uniform and responsibilities. Is it correct to strengthen my iman and back to and get back to my fitra by getting married? Marriage will actually help you to increase your iman because you're this is half of your deen and the biggest fitna, especially for the brothers, because Allah SWT says, mm-hmm. min nisa, number one on the list among the lower and fitna is nisa women. It's fitna to nisa. Allah said, the, the, the thing that I fear for you most is women. So if the brother gets married, that's half of the deen. Allah says, protect. Guarantee what's between your jaws and what's between your legs. I guarantee you Jannah. That's why the scholar says, Prophet says, if you guarantee me that, I guarantee you Jannah. That means half of uh, when you get married is done. All you have to do is watch your tongue. Mm-hmm. So, uh, my dear sister, inshallah, when you get married, alhamdulillah, it will increase uh, your iman if you marry the right guy. But remember, marry uh, the one that is thinking the same page. And now things really don't change after marriage. And I'll tell you why. Statistics show that only 5% of people Change after marriage. Wow. And don't do it for the wrong reasons. Do it because you believe in that. Mm. And also marry a brother that will also aid you and help you that he believes in the same way. But to say for circumstances, and I'm doing it, and I don't, I'm a little bit spec, you know, you know, uh, you know, speculative on this one. Uh, but, I'm, you know, good for you. I, I'm, I, I, I respect that. All the power to you. But make sure you do it for the right reasons and you also have the right guy to help you yeah. on this path. Wallahu alam. All right, bismillah. Um, the next question uh, is, what is ghira? So this person is asking, uh, or ghira. Um, and then they're also asking, is the wife allowed to work if the husband is not earning enough? And I'll add a little spin to it. What if the husband is earning enough and he doesn't wife, want his wife to work, but she still insists on working? Right. So ghira, there's a madhmum and mamduh. So ghira is jealousy. There's a good jealousy and there's a bad jealousy. So let's talk about the bad first. A bad jealousy is the brother uh, accuses of his wife out of speculations. Mm. He doesn't have any proof, but you know what? Uh, he, uh, you know, you, oh, you're looking at this guy. Oh, that means you have an affair. That's horrible because yeah. usually the guy has a horrible background. And that's what I tell the brothers, to be honest with you. Because yeah. you know that you have a bad uh, background and you're thinking that your wife is going to do the same. Or somebody's going to nail you because you've done something that, you know, it's revenge and, uh, and time to, to pay, you know. That's bad. That is extremely bad. It, but usually statistics show that women will come uh, on a speculations. Men will come with proof okay. to, to actually express that. Uh, women go on a hunch. Men will see something, then will act accordingly. And then there is a good jealousy. A jealousy like uh, the Sahaba, you know, uh, it says, Wallahi, if, uh, even though Prophet says, you know, if you do something, I said, what if you see your, your wife or somebody else? I'll kill him. He says, do you have four twins? No. He says, we will kill you too. He says, well, even I will kill him. So he was jealous. Mm. Ali ibn Abi Talib, radiallahu he was actually, you know, in Fatima, radiallahu anhu, and al-bayt al riding the horses. He was jealous of the horse. I'm going to kill his horse. You know, ya, ya miswak, inni arak. Miswak, you know, that you use in the round. So as Fatima was using the miswak, Ali, radiallahu anhu, and al-bayt al-atari, ajma'in, he used to get jealous of the miswak. Miswak, I see you go in her mouth, you see? This is the jealousy Mahmoud. You know, uh, it's praiseworthy and it's fine, you know, but as long as it does not turn into a uh, um, in a way that is negative, that is going to ruin your life, there's no trust anymore and it's baseless. Mm-hmm. Wallahu alam. Mm-hmm. Speaking of the uh, the rest of the, the the question, which I forgot, can you please remind me? I was going to say just if the wife is is working, oh, working. without without right. the husband yeah. wanting her to work or if she needs to work because he doesn't okay. enough. Fair enough. Uh, I usually tell the couples again, if uh, the sister wants to work, you have to agree on this before marriage, not after marriage. Mm. Uh, and sister, again, uh, make sure that this is one of your criteria, one of the things that you discuss with him. Listen, I've been studying. I have my... My whole career ahead of me, all of that stuff. And the brother uh, has to also agree on this or not agree before marriage, not after marriage. So if, if the sister works to help her, her husband, she gets double the reward, according to Sahih Bukhari. So uh, with that intention, is good. But as long as the work is halal, the brother has the right to say no to the sister. If the work is haram, she does khalwa, she's alone with the boss, or she travels with the boss overnight, all that stuff is not permissible. I don't care what it is. So live on the kafaf, on what, what, is, what you can sustain. Just to be able to live normal life, not having to have extravagant, you're not asked to do this. So please make sure you discuss these issues before marriage, not after marriage. But I tell the sister, if you want to work, you know what? If it's halal, it's halal. 
with the approval of your husband and there's a need for it. And as long as you don't take your career ahead of your husband and ahead of your children. So when you have children, you put them in a, you know, daycare, you still work on the career. Your career is more important than your husband and your children. That's when I say that's a red flag, Ukhti. So you have to have your priorities straight and check. Allahu Alam. Khair, inshallah. خلاص we'll take one more inshallah viewer question and then I remembered one question that I wanted to ask you inshallah um, we'll take this one inshallah it's saying what are the wife's rights versus the mother's rights yeah so this is uh, when I say uh, may Allah help us yani. I don't do politics but a man is going to do what a man is going to do yeah. mother-in-law da 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 okay so it's number one reason for divorce in North America Mother-in-law syndrome is number one reason for divorce oh, in North America because a brother marries a sister, mm. um, you know, that's from born and raised in the West. Mm. And the mother is born and raised in uh, whatever there is back home is. Mm. Uh, and they expect them to touch their feet and be uh, and, the, and the, their husband basically hired as a, a servant, a servant to her mother, mm. to his mother. And then and it becomes a lack of communication. The mother would say something and the sister doesn't think it's funny. She doesn't know because the culture issues. <gasps> she doesn't laugh at my joke. Or, she, or the sister comes in and wants to redecorate or she wants to take over the, uh, the kitchen. All these issues are horrible. So if you must live with each other, which I don't recommend, uh, I highly recommend to have an, an autonomy of your own place. So even if you live in the basement, it's a separate entrance. Mm. You have your you have your privacy. Nobody's allowed. It's okay. And even if the house is big enough to sell it, have two homes or a duplex next to each other, your mom and your father, whatever this family lives on one side, and you and your wife live on the side. And do not, I, I repeat, do not live with your parents if you have a brother in the house. Because mm. the sister now has to wear hijab outside and hijab inside. And it's sufficient for us as a warning when Prophet Muhammad وسلم, says, Alhamu al maut. Alhamu, the brother in law, is death because you know what? If the brother comes home, nobody's going to flag it. He's coming home. It's family. Mm -hmm. But if a stranger comes home, everybody's going, Who's this? Who's this guy? And the brother goes to work and the sister is home and the brother comes home with, alone with the, his sister in law. And things happen. And I've known enough people that they have pregnant uh, wife from the brother in law, not, the, not, the, not the, her husband. So it destroys the family, it destroys the marriage, and I'm telling you, please don't do it. So it has to be separate entrance, has to be separate things, not to all together, because that's not good. So for me, uh, mother-in-law syndrome is horrible, uh, you know, the daughter-in-law, all that stuff. However, uh, please make sure that you also do your homework. If you do, again, I'd live with this, and uh, it, it's going to happen. Uh, make sure you do your homework. You know, auntie, mom, I respect you, I love you very much, I'm here to help you. You know, to complete one of them, not compete against another. You, you know, you no matter what happens, brothers, no matter what happens, if if the if the wife says, you know what, it's either me or your mother in this household, غير uh, عتبة change the, uh, the, the, the you know this house, change uh, the, the the platform or the step of the house according to Ibrahim, Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam when you talk to Ismail. So because there's how many sisters can you marry out there? There's plenty of sisters you can marry. How many mothers do you have? One. So remember, this mother-in-law is extremely uh, difficult. So the ruling, the ruling is your wife has zero obligations to serve your mother. This is the majority of scholars, with the exception of one. That's a very weak opinion. As a matter of fact, the Jumhur, the majority of scholars, says your wife is not even obligated to serve you. So we call that fadl, not fard. Mm -hmm. It's a benevolence. It's nice kindness. It's righteousness. Not an obligation. And that's why the brothers don't get. Now you're obligated to serve me, you're obligated to serve my mother, you're you're, she's not obligated to do this. So you're in the right, the sister has the right to live on her own. If you can't afford it, do it. Don't get, your, don't get yourself in trouble, don't get your mother in trouble, don't get your wife in trouble. Because you have, you have to have these, these fair. You cannot be just saying yes to my mother even though she's wrong or doing something that's haram. You know, you, she's also responsible, your wife is responsible. You, made, you put your hand in her father's hand and said, I'll take care of it. It's an amana. You know, Allah entrusted you with her. Whatever was unlawful, meaning the intimate relations, will become lawful by the word of Allah. So you'll be held accountable. Be conscious of Allah on judgment day that you'll be held accountable for. For the oath you've taken. And the oath is, according to Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, be kind to them and, and dealing with them. But the strong opinion is, and the Jumhur says, Hold on to her in the best way possible. If things don't work out, may Allah protect you from that. Protect us all from that. 
You let go in the best of ways. Be good to those who are bad to you. So these are issues that are extremely sensitive. Uh, you know, I, I, you know, gloves are off, but it is what it is. May Allah protect us all and help us all. Yani, Allahu alam. Barakallah fiq. That was a very comprehensive answer. Uh, the final question is, I'll actually use a bit of a viewer's question and I'll incorporate my own question in that. So the viewer has asked, um, if you've tried everything and you know your marriage has come to what you feel is a natural end, is it okay to let go? And then the, the consequences of that is what I was going to ask is, a lot of people are afraid of getting divorced, sisters mainly, but it happens to brothers as well. Of the consequences of remarrying you, you won't be able to remarry. That's what they think. No, you won't be able to re- remarry. Who's going to marry me? You know, astaghfirullah al No one, no, no one who's righteous believes this. But some people actually think I'm used goods. You know what I mean? Like I hate to use that even terminology, but this is this is what's out there. Um, so Subhanallah, what's the what's the way to get around that stigma? Um, let let's let's break the questions down. So the first question is: Is it okay to let go? Uh, and then the second question is if you're a person searching uh, for a wife or a husband and they have been divorced and you're stigmatizing them what's 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 the message for, for these people okay so let's take the first one first is it okay to let go or not when a couple comes to me and says you know why you're gonna get divorced I said okay uh, have you used one two three have you gone to this have you gone have you exhausted all the resources and stuff like that so I said okay get divorced one if you if you get to a point that if the brother says, uh, you know what, Sheikh, if we don't get divorced, uh, I'm going to end up in jail and she's going to end up in morgue. I go, go ahead, divorce. After you exhaust all your resources, yeah. it's the last resort for me. Mm-hmm. If you've done your homework, you've done everything else, you've done your stashara, stashara, you've done your counseling, it's a, dead, it's a dead road. You know what I mean? So I'd say go ahead and do uh, give her a divorce. Now, uh, before you do, I want to make sure you understand the grass is not green on the other side. Most people think that, you know what, I'm going to get my freedom back and like something better out there. You know what, man? It's not going to be better out there. Or, you know what, sister? It's not going to be better out there. However, statistics show that brother give a divorce on a knee-jerk reaction. They didn't do their homework. Sisters almost always do their homework before they ask for divorce. Mm -hmm. They've talked talked to their lawyer. They've talked to their financial list. They've secured their future. They already, some, I'm not, you know, don't shoot. (laughs) I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. Some sisters already have somebody already uh, on, the, on, you know, on, on standby for them when they finish. Uh, again, these are the things that I have dealt with. Wow. My brother does it because, you know what, you want a divorce? Okay, get a divorce. It's an emotional thing. It's like a knee-jerk reaction. He regrets it after. But a sister will only ask for divorce, and you know what? Most of the time, actually, I can't generalize, when they've done their homework, they already have, they have their safety net. They have somebody. They've done, they've talked to the lawyer. They've done the duties and rights and all of that stuff. So I tell the brothers or the sisters seeking for a divorce, put two pages you know, the pros and cons, you know, uh, the pros and cons for me staying with this person and the pros and cons for me leaving this person. And it's not an emotional decision because you see it in black and white, but you have to be honest with yourself. Whatever you see that's actually better, pray istikhara on that and let Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala billah. Either after istikhara, things will get better or worse, you know, um, easier or more difficult. This is what one thing that to say whether I let go or not. Now, you know, on the divorce issue, uh, all these things that I talk about, you know, the, the three A's. Avoid, alter, accept. Look, if there is a, a root cause analysis, you know the reason that I want a divorce is because of this thing. So, okay, avoid, is the, avoid the root cause. Whatever that per, the reason or anything else, the cause for the divorce, that you want a divorce, avoid it totally. That's the root cause. Whatever it's the, you know, the mother-in-law, move out. If it's uh, the company you keep or the environment you're in, Change your job, change your location, save the marriage, save the children, especially because I'm a lawyer by the, for the children. Mm-hmm. By the way, when I talk with these, I'm defending the children, not the, not, the, not the parents, not the couple. They're not on my priority list. My priority list says the children because it's a responsibility now. You bring them to this thing and it's sufficient of a sin that you lead astray those who you shepherd or you were spending money on, meaning children. So this is something that I take serious. So avoid is number one of my answer. You know what? If there's a, the, real, the root cause analysis for you want to divorce this person, you alleviate. So the avoid, alter, that means, okay, I cannot alleviate because you know what? It's not happening. I cannot avoid the root cause. Then alter. Alter meaning make some changes to your life to be able to accommodate each other's request and you need to, to reconcile. And you need to make sure that you're at least being fair with one another. To meet halfway. Yes? Compromise. 
Number uh, three is the accept. The accept factor is that I cannot avoid the root cause. I cannot alter. I need to accept the fact that I can live miserable with this person or take the plunge and make the decision that you the only resource out and the only way out is a, a divorce to have a better life and not to make more damage than good for my children because I'm fighting in front of the children all the time. I'm a horrible uh, role model for them. That means they're going to affect their own marriage after that. So now the children, if they're affecting negatively, then a divorce is better, then do it. But if they're not, then hold. And that's uh, the reason I actually say do use the ABC, the, the triple A, avoid all their accept. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect you. May Allah uh, give us a long, healthy, righteous life together. And just share patience. And now the last last advice I give the couple when it gets to that is to do things for the sake of Allah. Don't deal with people. You know what? I'm going to I'm gonna be obedient husband, obedient wife, or good to, to my wife, good to my husband, for the sake of Allah. No matter how bad they are to me, I'm still going to be good to them. You know, do things for the sake of Allah, not for the sake of people. That's how you, you know what, yeah, Allah, I left this argument for the sake of Allah. Wallahi, it happens. Try it. Try it. You know what? She's arguing. He's arguing. He says, you know what? I, I, uh, uh, I'm not going to quarrel. I'm not going to debate. And I leave it for the sake of Allah. Wallahi, they will come and say, I'm sorry. I was wrong. But do it for the sake of Allah. Don't, you remember, there's, there's a shaitan right there. That's his job is to make you divorce. That's it. So remember, if you are there, you take, make wudu. The, the, the water puts out the fire. Pray to rakat. Leave the area. The shaitan is right there, man. If you can't you can sit, sit down or lay down, whatever it is, leave the area. Be a man. Do the right thing, man. You don't have to toe-to-toe -to -toe butt heads. So just there are things that, you know, that there you poke each other. You know, the root cause. Of that. Nobody wakes up in the morning and says, I want to divorce my wife. Mm -hmm. But is it an action or a reaction? Alleviate that. You know each other. You know the buttons. Don't go there. Work for the sake of Allah. Hold each other. Hold on your hand. He says, you know what? Are you ready to go to Jannah together? Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. Don't hate a sister because you'll see something. That means she has something bad. She has a lot of things that are good. So look at the bag. Okay, I, I don't like one, two. But she has one, two, three, four, gazillion. Good. You understand? I don't like it when she squeezes the toothpaste from the middle. Come here. I'm going to smack you because you know what? It's not a, it's not a big issue. These are the things that are on the C list, not the A's and the B's. So all I'm, all I'm trying to say is it's so easy for the new generation because right now they have the, the newest gadget, the newest phone, the newest everything, and they change things all the time. So see, easy for them to just get new things. They get used. It's a cultural thing now. Not to mention the parents are actually not helping because, it, honey, if this guy gives you a hard time, you come home. I'm going to smack that guy too because you're, you're not helping your daughter. Because I remember a long time ago, divorce rate was so low. Because you know what? Work it out. Stick it out. He's a good man. But right now, oh, come baby. But you're not helping your daughter. Mm. You're not helping. And, and don't be a mama's boy either. Wallahi, especially that. Don't be a mama's boy, man, because your mom tells you do, don't do, no, man. You're the man, dude. Don't respect to your mom, but have the rights, sheikh. Be, be honest. Be fair. So these are the things I tell you, Don't be a mama's boy. And, you know, make sure, don't do things for the sake of Allah. And that's exactly what I'm telling you. Wallahi, if you do that, you will be happy in this life and hereafter. So, uh, just to recap, divorce is brutal. Children pay a big price. And whether you like it or not, they will remember this for the rest of their lives. Yeah. Uh, this to show that the children will be crying on their pillow. Whether you like it, and they may show a, a, a brave face, but uh, it will affect them for the rest of their lives. So again, uh, I, divorce is the last resort. And if you have conscience of Allah subhanahu wa jalla fi Allah, it will be the last thing because, as I said, uh, this is something that is halal. I'm not saying it's haram, mm. but it is the last resort. May Allah protect us. And remember, prevention is better than cure. Khair, inshallah. Last, just last, uh, last thing, just to touch on the second part of that question. Um, if someone is looking to get married and they come across a brother or a sister who's been divorced, um, is that something that they should use yeah. as a deal breaker? Subhanallah, Shaykh. Like I take him back to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu the best of creation. Yes, Out of all of his wives, how many was uh, a virgin? Just one. Just one. Mm. Isn't that amazing? All of his wives, all, A-L-L, -L, all of his wives were divorcee or widowed. Mm. Only one that was virgin. Khadija radiallahu anhu the best, the love of his life, Aisha radiallahu was jealous of Khadija even after she passed on. Mm -hmm. She was older than him. Now, I'm not going to go into how old and it's debatable between the scholars. Mm -hmm. Either or, it was, she was divorced. Mm -hmm. She was older than him. He loved her very much. Mm -hmm. So the stigma is cultural, not religious. Mm -hmm. 
So, you know, however, I've, I've already said that. Uh, so I know uh, that sister is, is divorced. They put an X. It's the red flag. Mm. Why, dude? Maybe the brother was a horrible man. Mm, abusive. She did her, she, abusive. She did her best, but you know what? It was her fitna test. She couldn't do this anymore. She's a good sister. You never know. Maybe the brother was the same thing. Maybe the brother it was really a good guy, but he divorced his girl because she fa- he found out there are a few things that happened, and he, did, he wasn't aware of it. She deceived him, uh, or either or, both ways. Mm-hmm. So I'm just saying, you know what? Uh, uh, compatibility is important. So if the brother is divorced, I recommend he looks for a divorcee sister, mm-hmm. divorced sister. That, now they're in the same boat. I understand it's more difficult for the sisters, and I admit to that. Uh, to get remarried after she's divorced, it's it's easier for the brother to get married even if he's, if he's divorced. It's just reality, unfortunately. But it doesn't mean that we uh, take him off. And uh, unfortunately, the community kind of outcasts them, and they're they're now oh my God, she's a divorcee or he's divorced, and and that's unfortunate because we're not supposed to go on. Uh, each, you know, a, a man. Uh, I'm gonna finish with this, inshallah. Mm-hmm. A sahabi radiallahu anhu used to, he wanted to divorce his wife, and the people were asking, why do you want to divorce your wife? He says, I do not talk about my wife. So he divorced her. The idda was over. She married somebody else. He says, okay, now that she, her idda is over, she married somebody, she's not your wife anymore. Why did you want to divorce her? He says, I do not talk about somebody else's wife. SubhanAllah. Yeah. Because Allah says, when you, the word taqwa, this, uh, in Surah Al-Talaq. Mm. But when it comes to Talaq, we forget everything. Yes. We forget Quran and Sunnah. We become... <laughs> I don't know how to help us with life. I don't know what's going on, man. What happened? Mm-hmm. Hold on to her in the best way possible. Let her go in the best way possible. Excellent being, you know, Ihsan is not being good to this or good to you. Ihsan is being good to this or bad to you. Mm-hmm. For a reason. At the talaq. So, you know, even doctors, engineers, and lawyers in the high, the noble of society will become evil. Mm-hmm. Will forget everything. And that's among the signs of hypocrisy. إِذَا خَاسَ fajr. Because you know each other's secrets. Mm. You know each other's intimate relations, and, and, and. And they use that. It's as if now you become best friends and all of that stuff, you best love each other. When you break, you become your worst enemies. Mm. That's a sign of hypocrisy. It has nothing to do with Islam. So may Allah give us taqwa, Ya Rabb, to hold on in the best way and let go in the excellence of way. Amen. Allahumma ameen. Barakallah fiqh, Shaykh. It's been Allah very Allah. insightful. Wallahi. And I would urge everyone to watch this podcast twice, three times, subhanAllah, just yes. so, and get a notebook and, and write everything down, because wallahi, subhanAllah, the gems that you've dropped on us today, Sheikh, and you've given us more time than we yes. even agreed upon, so barakallah fiqh. My pleasure and honor. It's only with the blessing of Allah that good things and good deeds are established. Sah. Alhamdulillah, my name is Salihat. Barakallah fiqh. Barakallah fiqh for watching. Again, as we always say, anything good uh, that we've said is from Allah and His Messenger, everything bad. That we've said is uh, from Shaytan and from ourselves. Kifah, inshallah, will be back for the next episode. I know you've missed him. Uh, inshallah, he'll be back. Uh, Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.